Welcome back, America. A second, one of the greatest constitutional lawyers I know, David Schoen. He uh, worked on the one of the Trump impeachments. He's a fantastic criminal rights and criminal defense attorney. David Schoen, uh, you're in Jerusalem right now. So before I get to a couple of legal questions I have for you, based on what this Jack Smith is doing, which is really contemptible in my view, you're in Jerusalem. You get a sense of what's going on among the people there. In the United States, we have the New York Times, we have MSNBC and CNN, and other reprobates in this country who really are undermining Israel's effort to win this war. And almost a daily recitation of why Benjamin Netanyahu should be removed by hook or by crook, why his administration is right wing, why they're responsible for everything going on. What is your sense in Israel? My sense is the people are united, they're focused on winning, and all the rest of this stuff doesn't matter right now. The people are united as maybe never before. These comments are terrible that undermine, use political bases for trying to undermine the unity in Israel and what must be a consistent message that Hamas, Palestine Islamic Jihad, all of these terrorist groups must be destroyed. Israel is fighting for its existence now, and the United States must simply support that. Their support, we support our own interests in the United States when we support Israel. You're an American citizen. You see what's going on on our southern border, the mayhem, the rapes, selling children into sex slavery. You see the death from the fentanyl and other toxic drugs hundreds of thousands of Americans over the course of two and a half years. Uh, you see our cities are overwhelmed. Uh, you see the mayhem and the anarchy, violations of our immigration laws by the current administration. And yet Joe Biden is talking about citizens in Gaza. He doesn't talk about citizens of America and how they're being treated based on his policies. He doesn't talk about the citizens in Iran while we have wave sanctions on Iran so they can put down their citizens and kill them and rape them and torture them. He doesn't talk about the citizens in Syria, the citizens in Saudi Arabia, the citizens in Yemen, the citizens in Ukraine. Why do you think he's so myopic about the Gaza Strip when we know for a fact that the Israelis are not trying to kill citizens? Not only not trying to kill citizens, even John Kirby has acknowledged, the National Security Council spokesperson, that the Israeli army acts in the most uh, protective way of civilian casualties of any military in the world. Richard Kemp has said it from England. But I hope that President Biden was listening carefully today when the so-called political head of Hamas said, we must engage in violent acts, attacks against the United States and Britain to force their hand to push for the ceasefire. They play into Hamas's hands. This is part of their playbook from the start. Attack with atrocities, rape, torture, murder, mutilation, and then push for a ceasefire and blame the civilians whose lives, they blame civilian deaths whose lives they don't care about. Let me ask you this, David Schoen. When this Biden Blinken administration are basically rearming the enemy, Iran, where Donald Trump had them on their back, when we are giving money to UNRWA, which is a corrupt organization of the UN, which then gives money to Hamas, when we are coddling Qatar, which gives money to Hamas and protects its leaders, when we give money to the PLO, the Arafat founded PLO in violation of the Taylor uh, Act, uh, who commit acts of terrorism as well, and when we give money or allow money to flow into Iran that funds Hezbollah, how is it? that the Biden administration and Blinken take no responsibility for what they've unleashed, for the firestorm that they have created, which has led to October 7th and the atrocities against the Jews, which has led to every civilian death that's taking place in Gaza right now. How do they get off taking no responsibility whatsoever? They must take full responsibility for it. And one other to add to the list is they came into office and immediately removed the Houthis from the foreign terrorist organization uh, designation list. Um, horrible move. The Trump administration had put them on it, and now they're attacking our ships. Um, they must take full responsibility for it. As you said, the Trump administration had Iran on the verge of bankruptcy. These are Iranian puppets operating around the world. I believe that when we fund UNRWA, when we fund all of the other entities you mentioned, we're providing material support directly and indirectly to foreign terrorist organizations. And the Taylor Force Act, as you pointed out, prohibits us from continuing to fund the Palestinian Authority as long as they're paying pay for slay, so-called martyr money. Their constituent components are the PFLP and other designated terrorist organizations. 
Americans. Money is fungible. They're using this money uh, to attack Israel, period. Don't you find it amazing, David Schoen? Uh, you've seen American media. You live in the United States most of your, your year and so forth that they don't even talk about this? Joe Biden's never even asked, well, why are you continuing to pour billions and billions of dollars into these terrorist entities? Uh, and, why, and, and then on the other hand, you keep telling Israel effectively to surrender its sovereignty. You want to give away you know, Judea and Samaria, their, the Israeli ancestral homes, you want to give it to the Palestinians uh, as a reward for what took place on October 7th, and then you claim it's going to be peace, a two-state solution? Did Iran not say two days ago, David Schoen, doesn't care about two states? It wants a caliphate. That's what they said. Did Hamas not say the same thing? We don't give a damn about two states. We want a caliphate. So a two-state solution is effectively Israel's final solution, is it not? Absolutely. And that caliphate doesn't just end with Israel. That's a world strategy, quite frankly, for Iran and its fellow travelers. But, uh, you know, as to why we're doing this, why we continue to fund it, I think uh, the head of the uh, uh, horrible group CARE, C-A-I-R, the other day said it all. Um, when he was celebrating the Hamas atrocities in Israel, he also said later on that the Biden administration seems to finally be listening to us when we tell them they're going to lose our votes if they continue to to support Israel. This is an election year. That apparently speaks volumes. We cannot allow political principle to be overcome by, politi uh, politi by political expediency in trying to win an election. We have to stand on principle. We have to stand uniformly against terrorism. This is the first time you can, I could imagine both Hillary Clinton and Dennis Ross have said there shouldn't be a ceasefire early on in this thing. And they continue to believe that. Dennis Ross has finally taken responsibility for forcing Israel to allow concrete to come into Hamas that built the tunnels. Hamas has had since 2005 to build a democracy if that's what they wanted to do. Instead, they squandered their money on building rockets, rocket factories, tunnels, and ways to try to extinguish the state of Israel and the Jewish people worldwide. I'll say this for me. The Democrat Party has blood on its hands, even in the United States here, where it refuses to even vote in unity on resolutions that condemn what's taking place. Joe Biden, his public statements that the Israelis are indiscriminately bombing Gaza, Hezbollah, uh, the Gazan civilians, uh, he is stoking anti-Semitism in this country. It is grotesque. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.